Okay. Oh. So All right. I'm going to do a small introduction before we get started. Okay. So hello, everybody. Um, thank you for attending our How to Share Your Film workshop with Terence Odette and Paul Zimmick. Uh, my name is Christina and I am Factory Media Center's Operations Coordinator. Um, before we begin tonight, I would like to take the time to acknowledge that the land of present day Hamilton is situated on the shared ancestral lands of the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe, including the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation. This land is covered by the Dish with One Spoon One Pump Belt Covenant, which was an agreement between the Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe to peacefully share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes and preserve them for years to come. As a community not-for-profit artist-run center, Factory is committed to active ongoing reconciliation in collaboration with Indigenous peoples in our community. Um, if anyone watching would also like to get involved in this work, please um, check out what's currently going on at 1492 Landback Lane. Um, it's about 20 minutes away from Hamilton and um, land defenders are currently uh, protecting Indigenous land from developers and collecting donations to help towards um, either bail funds or like donations of physical supplies. Um, if you haven't heard of Factory Media Centre before, we are a media arts centre in Hamilton, Ontario um, that hosts exhibitions, screenings, um, provides multimedia equipment, um, studio space and skill development workshops for local artists and independent filmmakers. Um, this is all made possible through our operating funders um, the Canada Council of the Arts, Ontario Arts Council, City of Hamilton, and Insight Foundation for the Arts. Um, thank you to, to, to our funders for making these programs possible. Um, tonight's program is currently live streaming to both Facebook and YouTube. Um, if anybody watching has any questions throughout um, the entire workshop, um, just put them in the corresponding chats and I'll be checking both of them to um, feed your questions to Terence and Paul. Um, so before we get started on the workshop, I just want to introduce our workshop facilitators. Um, Terence Odette is an award-winning writer and director um, who began his career producing and directing music TV series and specials, um, including over 130 music videos. He's written and directed four feature films to date um, with critical acclaim numerous awards and nominations with screenings at Sundance, Berlin, TIFF, VIF, BFI London. Um, Odette has a number of feature scripts and development, two documentaries, Festa and Unimaginable in post-production and a supernatural revenge feature, Stress, going to camera um, in 2021. Paul Zimmick began his work in the movie business at the age of 14, working as an usher in his hometown movie theater. He graduated university and took a job in Toronto as a media buyer for film distributor, 20th Century Fox. Over the next 10 years, Paul enriched his passion for movies in the sales and marketing departments of Alliance Independent Films, Academy of Canadian Cinema and Television, Playback, CBC, and Juice Worldwide. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to hand the floor over to Terence and Paul to begin um, the chat this evening. Thank you. I'm Terrence. The other guy's Paul. <clears throat> so, so, and uh, Paul, you're going to take off. You want to want to start this? Yeah. So, you know, we don't really have a, uh, a a specific schedule. There's just such a wide range of things that we can speak about on this topic. Uh, it's, um, you know, once you've done the hard work, uh, and congratulations if you have, in, in getting a film made it's really always difficult to, to uh, step out and try to find places in order to get this uh, thing out there so that people can see it. There's a variety of different ways that have already been established in the marketplace, but sometimes these don't, those just aren't available to everyone. So I think it's valuable for Terry and I to bring you our experiences. Ter uh, Terrence as a, as, a, um, as a filmmaker, and uh, I'm a filmmaker as well too, but the bulk of my career has been in distribution and sales and getting films out there. So um, <clears throat> new technologies and things have allowed people, you know, uh, a lot more access 
uh, to showing their films and, and um, you know, the traditional parts, points of entry uh, are not the only ways anymore. You can literally just put your film up on YouTube or on Vimeo and invite people to come and see it. And there's commerce-based systems around there where you can begin to get, to get money back. So um, what really I think people want to do and, and find out is, you know, how do we really get the big legitimate companies and, uh, you know, streamers, broadcasters and things like that in, involved? Um, so, uh, you know, there's also different types of media and I had some thoughts about this too. If you made a short film, you know, your path is going to be different in a lot of ways than it is, uh, you know, if you've, if you've made a feature. So we'll try to touch on as much of this as we can. And, uh, you know, along the way, like Christina said, if you have any questions, you know, please uh, feel as though you can just interrupt and, and uh, it'll help us uh, maybe guide our way along. Uh, throughout the conversation. So um, it's interesting. I was, I was with Terrence today and uh, we were working on, um, on putting together uh, like a teaser. We have, we're working on a documentary that's already been shot and we're out there uh, uh, seeking financing to finish the project. And uh, it's a visual medium. So, you know, we have this idea, we want to present it, get it out into the marketplace. But in order to do that, we need a little bit of money to finish it. And, um, you know, really being able to show people what's in the movie um, is, is powerful. We can tell them what the budget is for it. And we can explain it on paper through synopses and we can even show pictures, but really there's nothing as powerful as putting together a reel. So, uh, so Terry and I were just working on, on, on editing that and, and getting it together. It's, it's kind of exciting. So we're going through this process too. And as we do, you know, we're kind of thinking of, okay, what's life going to be like once this thing is finished? The world has changed so much. Uh, people aren't getting out into theaters and they're not going to film festivals. And we're all, we're all in the business experiencing what that means to us as well. So it's, uh, it's definitely a lively topic. Um, but I guess we can tell you kind of the missionary position way of how these things generally end up happening. Uh, Terry, give me a little bit of relief here and uh, just give me a little bit of an example of, you know, the film that you made in 2015 um, called Fall, uh, which was highly critically acclaimed. Congratulations on that again. Um, you know, just give us a little bit of an idea of, uh, you know, we know how it, how it got made, but once it was made, um, uh, like how did you, what was your path of, of getting it out there? It very uh, quickly, and this is not, well, it's been on my features out of the four, three have all had distributions attached um, before. Fall had uh, Mongo Media um, releasing the film. In other words, they, you make a deal with them before you actually shoot the film and their money, they give you a little bit of money, a uh, very little, like 3% or something of, of your total budget. Um, <clears throat> and you've used that in your production. It, it just absorbs, and then you owe them that money. So uh, that film, Monger Media, we finish the film. They get, also get to have a say on the cut. Um, this is a, a narrative feature. It's finished, we've done it. Then they or their marketing team starts to say, okay, what are we gonna do? Festivals, they apply for festivals. Okay, it's gonna be released. Ours happened to get released fairly quickly after we finished it. We finished it in September. It was released. Oh, no, but you chose to get this thing out there in festivals first to introduce yes. this to the marketplace internationally yeah. or in Canada yeah. or wherever it would take you. What was your, why, did, how did you choose? Well, what festival with, with, fall, the, with fall, the, the odd thing that happened was that uh, in the past, my, uh, my films had played. So we did apply for festivals. Some we didn't get in uh, uh, to, to a great surprise, actually, because I, I thought it was, a, you know, anyways, it didn't get into certain film festivals. So its path started to shrink pretty quick as for, because you'd think the path on some of my other films were, okay, you play at Sundance and then Sundance invites you, you because somebody at Sundance sees you at uh, UK and BFI, it goes to that one. Oh, um, someone saw it there. It starts to do a whole bunch of other tier film festivals and it starts to work its way around uh, be even before its release. Um, and that might take a year of film festivals before it's released. Um, in this case, we did that and we were less successful 
in film festivals. The world had started to change too as for what uh, they were accepting for film festivals. Film festivals used to have a lot more art house style films. Uh, they're much more of a, of a commercial kind of uh, uh, thing. That, that's my excuse anyways. Um, we ended up well, having <laughs> so a anyway, world you're like, sorry to we were, like, you, you yeah. said like, so say you finished your film in May or yeah. say for example, and then you yeah. said, okay, the next film festival is coming up is, you know, uh, Toronto, Venice, Vancouver, Toronto. Or whatever. Like, yeah. so you just start applying to the ones that, you know, the deadlines haven't come up yet. So you're like, okay, we filmed the dead next deadline is in June. We finished our film. You take that film, you go to their website and you, or wherever it is. And you simply say, okay, this is the information you'd like. You'd like a link to the film. You fill out all the filmmaker info and you yeah. press submit pay your hundred dollars or whatever and yeah. then you send it in yeah and then you wait and if you have a personal contact that is um it works better so yeah. so in some films in my cases in my case a connection of the producers with a history of one of their films at a film festival gives them preferential kind of phone call treatment to be able to say hey i've got a new film i'd like you to see it no go yeah okay send it so that's the way that that would that worked with fall it gets it it goes in film festivals it plays film festivals and then that and then it depends on territories so within the territory of canada it gets released uh in december of uh um, 2014 actually um it plays toronto it plays uh tip film circuit which is so uh, you theatrical know, releasing comes first. theatrical so. release comes first we do theatrical release uh the distributor uh paid for and did uh, trailers everything we needed to we had we had we were involved but they were pretty much in charge of that posters all that stuff marketing they do all that mm -hmm. so um and then <clears throat> um but what you are doing in the end is you will always owe them that money that's that's the that's the that's the side of working with a bigger distributor is that they will pay for everything but they're kind of lending it to you yeah they pay and, the expenses and the expenses get paid off first and then they yeah. take their fee because they have office people and they have marketing yeah. people and yeah. people that call up the cinemas yeah. and uh you know all then they get their yeah. fee and yes. then um it's it's funny how that equals zero dollars at the end of <laughs> yes we, we got yeah, sixty five thousand dollars <laughs> and we ended up owing them 63 even though we we sold uh you know it sold to air canada it sold to uh, uh okay so Super, let's not Super get ahead Channel. of that so let's say okay, yeah, okay so first so first you go through th your theaters how long does it stay in theaters then for that point you're if you're lucky in canada it's just going to stay in theaters two three weeks if you're lucky um it will play it will do the circuit and it'll start playing uh in the case of my type of film the films that i make it'll play the princess cinema waterloo now it'll play the playhouse in hamilton it would play in London. Uh, it would play in uh, Win uh, Regina, Winnipeg. Each major center has an independent cinema. Um, for the most part, for the type of films that that I've been making, that's where they're going to land. In right. the old days, then, it would have played at the Carlton in Toronto. Right. You know, tip, okay. a light box it played. So, so then the after area. that, you're finished with your theatrical release. It runs its course, yeah. plays a few, you know, like maybe after a couple of months. And then Mongrel Media, your distributor, once again, um, puts the film out. At that point, they can they can do, I guess, the next stage is what they call non-theatrical area, right? It's like, yeah. you know, hotels, cruise ships, um, Airplanes. You know, uh, airlines, you know, all that yeah. kind of stuff. And that generates some money as well, too. And they're all, you know, trying to get as much out of this as possible. And I guess the next logical stage after that would be they used to call it pay-per-view, but I guess it's now, um, you know, premium video on demand or um, or, or home video. Like, like and well, and iTunes comes up pretty quick, right? Yeah, like iTunes, streaming, be, like yeah. iTunes is very quick yeah. these days. It's and and now yeah. even more so, right? It's ninety some, days. I think the rule yeah. that Cineplex says is we we definitely want to have the film in theaters for ninety days before it's exploited on any other media. Um, you know, that's where you start kicking in with your airlines yeah. a little bit, and boom. And, and that that's Cineplex. That's not necessarily if you're not playing Canadian films. Playing at Cineplex is rare, as you know. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's it's it it it. Uh, um, I had heard. You know, it's it's very difficult. They don't Canadian films don't play at Cineplex very often. We do rely on the Bell Lightbox, the Carlton Cinema in Toronto, uh, you know, Playhouse here, uh, 
you know, Regina. Your community a, cinemas. Yes, yeah. yeah, all independent cinemas. So it's a different game and they can bring it up to iTunes fairly quick, which they can do mm -hmm. and that can work. I mean, you uh, you can ask to that, you, you, your experience too, with yeah. uh, uh, The Woman Who Loves Giraffes, which is a very successful yeah. release, theatrical, and one of the most successful releases in Canada last year. So yeah. it's it's when that gets released, it's a different path in mine. Mine was the quick path, get onto iTunes, and then you can still do screenings. You're still doing theatrical. Uh, some of it, um, uh, your distributor, even as big as Mongrel, don't aren't going to really, they don't, they don't, they're not booking it, but you can book it yourself. So in other words, you can push bookings, uh, um, you know, which is what we did. Um, and then you get the, the like I said, uh, 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 film circuit, you know, which is a way that a lot of Canadian films, if we're talking about narrative features or documentary features, film yeah. circuit in, is a way, which is a TIFF uh, runs. Uh, and it's kind of a puts films in towns in Canada that don't have independent cinemas that play foreign art house Canadian films. There. Okay, so then we get, so we're through the theatrical thing. And then the, I'm just going through really quickly the lifestyle of where, like, you know, really where all what they call, what they would call the profit centers of where movies go to. So you got theatrical first, and then you've got those kind of you know, little non-theatrical areas or smaller areas. Then you're on, then you're on uh, quickly on video on demand. And uh, then, home video, digital Blu-ray, whatever is left of, of you know, that, uh, you know, it's obviously uh, not, not not what it was, uh, you know, several years ago, but there's still some money left in Blu-ray. And and um, and then after that, you're looking at uh, streaming and pay TV, you know, so those premium uh, things like um, like HBO Canada, Crave, or, uh, you know, or, 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 or Netflix and, and Amazon Prime. Uh, and then after that, it goes out of the cable television or free television system where you're dealing with broadcasters like Global, City TV, CBC, CTV, like and documentary channel, that kind of thing. And that usually, I guess, the span of that in its entirety would probably be about, you know, three or four years. And Paul, yeah. remember, that's one market, right? That's just Canada. You're talking, yeah. about, you're talking about Canada. You're going to go through the whole thing again, as we did with Paul in the U.S. release. So, yeah. and you and you did too. It's like you go back to theater. It goes through the same kind of chain. Yeah. Uh, and maybe the US might have, especially in my case, the US still does DVDs or Blu-rays, but they don't necessarily, there's still a market for it there, less so of a market here. So, so you don't get a DVD release in Canada, but you get one in, in the US. So, uh, you know, and then, so just to kind of summarize this area, we're pretty lucky, Terry. Like this is, like, you know, most films don't get full North American releases in theaters and all the way through the system. There's only so many movies that can get put out and there's only so much space for it. So we were fortunate enough to get distributors here in Canada and in the US and then even some other countries around the world as well too. You know, that's always the best case scenario but that's not gonna happen for everybody especially some filmmakers starting out. And, and I mean, this is really why, where we can kind of help people is like, well, what if uh, a, a distributor like Mongrel Media or like Kino Smith in Canada, which we had, or Kino Lorber in the U.S. Uh, what if they just all say no? You know, like then, then what do what do we do? You still have gone through all the hard work, and you want to be able to get it out to people. So, um, you know, what would be the next step that you would think for somebody who simply applies to a lot of film festivals? Maybe they get into a few, they get a little bit of a few reviews out there from local press. And um, <clears throat> now they want to make their film available to their to their friends and family. And uh, maybe who knows? Sometimes these like uh, 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 films do catch on with online audiences. Is there a pathway for you to get onto iTunes or for you to get onto um, uh, on, onto YouTube or uh, you know you know what else is there? Um, uh, do you want to talk about that, or do you want me to talk about that? How do you how do you want? To oh. I, you know, the fact is, is that I know people who have experience doing that on your own. And I, I know from, I mean, I know that you, no matter what path you're going, if you're a Canadian filmmaker, as you, as you know, you still have to do a lot of work yourself. Mm -hmm. You still will be doing a lot of, a lot of banging on doors, a lot of phone calls, a lot of kind of work yourself um that's just the way 
the Canada's shape, less so in the States. A little bit, you're pushing the distributor, you're pushing that. But as for like putting out a film yourself, I don't really have that much experience putting it out. But I, other, other than, you know, making early shorts and sending them to uh, distributors or sending them to film festivals and playing it, then doing that kind of thing, showing up. I know <clears throat> from my first, uh, my first feature, Peter, which is like 20 years ago, we were at a film festival, that's where we worked. If you get into a film festival, that's where you work. You're running around town, trying to get people at your screening, putting posters up on, doing all that kind of stuff yourself, just because, and we didn't have a distributor for Heater, um, uh, that uh, you're doing all that work yourself because you, if you get people to see your film, the industry takes a notice. Mm -hmm. If you don't get people to see your film, it's a lot harder yeah. to, I remember running around at, uh, you know, uh, Halifax, with, you know, before the screening, popping up posters wherever we could. We were, you know, back then you're photocopying them, making photocopies and just going up and taping them up, just to trying to get people to uh, to be at your screening. And I still, I know from being at a lot of film festivals, a young, young filmmakers with with short films, with uh, their own independent feature are doing having to do that because the distributor's not doing any of that. They don't have the, the Rolodex to be able to call people to come see a free we're doing the same dog and pony show at sundance with it it's like it was just on a different level it was like we were really out working you go to a film festival and you can have fun in these places but really you shouldn't really should be working trying hard to get your uh, your film seen um that's really my experience um you uh, i maybe you have i can't recall whether uh baby formula um had a distributor or you distributed it didn't you well or... we like like yeah let's use that film as an example then um you know there's different genres of films and different genres of film festivals you know you can have uh documentaries that can play a circuit of documentary film festivals around the world in canada and at least in toronto here we have hot docs and uh you know there's there's uh there's other festivals in montreal and then around the world in different places so once you kind of get a film like that out there and into that circuit you know other film festival programmers are going to find out that you were in the program over at hot docs and they'll they'll uh, your your awareness is increased at that point and uh you know your chances of getting into other festivals are are are, uh, are, are increased so um then uh the baby formula previous film that i made was a lesbian uh, uh um a film uh and uh uh, there is there's a circuit or there were even at that point, uh, you know, 12 years ago, there there's a, a very robust circuit of film festivals around the world playing uh, LGBTQ uh, uh, films and they're constantly on the lookout for great content. We did really well playing uh, playing there. And then there's also supportive networks of television networks or, or, or uh, you know, online um, uh distribution systems as well too that that pay money for those films so you know kind of thinking about that as you're making your film if you do have something that fits into your horror or or one of those specific genres there's homes for you not only here in north america but but around the world and uh that's worth seeking out you know you know too yeah. but um you know the the other thing i was saying too is that you know in 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 lieu of all of this you know you can um the, for these things, whether it's distribution uh, through a standard distributor or getting into film festivals, uh, you kind of have to be invited to the party in order to participate. The thing that I do like about iTunes um, and, uh, you know, platforms that are, are, are uh, transactional video on demand is that, that you don't need to be invited you, anyone can really as long as you meet the the technical standards and as well as the you know ethical standards of what they show you can um just put those things out there going through uh, an aggregation system uh that allows access to filmmakers whether it's a short film or a, or a feature film and uh one of the companies that i've previously worked at juice worldwide uh, provides that service of allowing filmmakers to uh, to access that. I don't know if they exactly do that anymore. They might just be dealing with companies, but they're uh, um, 
uh, I think Premier still, uh, you know, there are there are aggregation companies out there that that do that. I have to check regularly because they change ownership, they change names, and uh, some of them go down. But filmmakers can get their film on iTunes uh, by just simply going to to uh, Apple or iTunes and looking, uh, you know, in, in, at the list of the partnerships that they have in different regions around the world and seeing who they can contact in order to get up there. And then really, it's just a matter of marketing and driving people to your film. Like truly iTunes is a, is a forest of movies with, uh, you know, with, um, uh, you know, George Lucas standing on, on, on one tree and uh, the Disney movies on the other. You really have to try to find a way in order, like people aren't just gonna go to iTunes and find you, you have to drive people there. So uh, knowing the product that you have and uh, the audience that you're after and um, having some strong marketing materials uh, is, is always really important when you're making a film and things that you should be thinking about, even when like this kind of stuff that we were chatting about today, uh, Terry, when we were working on the documentary is like, you know, you're, you have to constantly be thinking, what are the attractive things that are unique about this film that are going to be able to cut through the thick, thick competition out there and uh, attract people towards us. And uh, this this is you have to you have to stand back from your film because if you're the filmmaker and you're making film and you're planning on trying to market it yourself um it's a good idea you have to figure out how to step back from being that filmmaker i my recent experience is that i have a short film i love it it's a lovely little short film i put it around film festivals and it wasn't getting anywhere i decided on a whim recently to change the category of it and i called it an experimental film and right. it got into a film festival like that. Like within a week, I got it back and it said, and I went, isn't that strange? I was trying to push it as a narrative film. Mm. And, and in my mind, that's my experience. So everything I do is kind of a narrative and there is a narrative, but it's it's got an odd sense uh, structure in what it's doing. And the minute I did experimental, it went into experimental uh, and, and it worked. And I'm wondering, that's, that's so important to stand back and I find it's always when you're doing your synopsis of your film or your your punchline, your 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 teaser line, you know, your two sentence thing, your one sentence thing. It's really good to work with somebody else and say, what's my film? Tell mm -hmm. me my film in one sentence. And and then they can tell you your film. It's it's really valuable because you're not necessarily the best person to write your synopsis. As a filmmaker, yeah. I think yeah. you need to, you really need to have someone who understands marketing and that marketplace and yeah i mean <clears throat> I my, you know i have lots of experience doing music videos and that was always i told my clients right away you're a can of coke and i'm selling you so the drummer might want to be up front in the camera but he's not going to be the lead singer is that's what's going to happen it's a can of coke it's an ad mm -hmm. you're selling this thing and it's like you need to step back from that and go what is as you said paul what is attractive about your film Mm -hmm. And that's where you have to go. Poster, you have to know, as you're going to tell us shortly, I'm sure, you have to know your market. You have to know where you're, where you're going. I see yeah. Christina nodding as you is. Do we have any questions, Christina? Yeah, we have, we have two questions so far. Okay. Are you ready for them? Yeah. yeah. How easily, sorry, how easy is it to navigate filmmaking outside of the telefilm industry or system? Any advice for newbies dealing with telefilm in general? We'll, we'll let you know in six months, right? <laughs> no, no, that's just my. Um, uh, I'm going to add this and then let you talk, Paul. I, I think. Be careful. I will. I, I think it's becoming easier and easier because those doors are getting tougher and tougher. There's less and less money, and there's a lot of, um, there can be a lot of, uh, uh, and, and, and a lot, and there's, there's a, a lot of films, you know, that's all I can say is, is that it's, it is, I have a lot of hope in self-distribution. I actually think you can self-distribute your film in Canada while looking for bigger markets outside of Canada. It depends on the type of film you're making, but if you're making something that's not a Disney film, that's not a, a big commercial film, I think it's a lot easier you will actually potentially make some money because I will say the last thing, I've only made money on one of my films after it left, you know, the gate. And that was 
because it had a decent US distributor. I've never seen a dollar from my of Canadian money from any of my films after. After I got my fee for directing and writing. There. Okay. So Paul, how easy uh, well, is it to navigate without telefilm? You know, <clears throat> uh, telefilm's wonderful. I mean, like, you know, this is our cultural uh, agency that's in that 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 um, you know has been really supportive to me. I've gotten uh, films, um, you know, s supported by Telefilm for uh, production, uh, you know, from the beginning to finish a film, uh, as well as for marketing funding. So I think the community that surrounds Telefilm is, is really important too. Uh, I think Telefilm places, it helps to place a business around your, your movie. And, uh, you know, it's almost like a, 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 legitimate, a legitimacy of check boxes for young filmmakers as well too, um, about, you know, these are really the big business things that you're going to encounter as your career and your films, you know, begin to grow. So the experiences that I've had with them, I think are great. Uh, and the importance of telefilm as I was coming up through the system over the last 20 years was really very important, you know, for, for making movies uh, and, and getting them out there in the world. Now things I think have changed a lot more. Um, you, we can make films a little bit, a, lo a lot cheaper than you could at one point. And then I also think that, um, uh, you know, there are other there are other funding opportunities that are out there. There's regional, um, uh, like the the uh, Northern Ontario Heritage Fund, uh, as well as uh, our tax credit system. Um, you know, the Ontario uh, um, Ontario Creates uh, system as well too. So piecing together financing without telefilm is something that I'm seeing a lot more filmmakers do inside of Canada. Um, and uh, it it is it is I understand that it's a it's a um, you know, it's 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 a it's a you know it's it's a target to shoot for you know to make to make big films with telefilm and uh, but uh, if your question is how hard is it to do it without them, um, I got two films my next two films that are coming out I don't believe are going to have any telefilm funding in it and and I think that's okay. I I think I would say that um, uh, because I can appreciate the question. Um, because it, even though all my all my features have received telefilm, I would love to work without them, because there are restrictions that come with getting telefilm. Um, uh, they they are involved. They are mm. they're they're not that they're not incredibly, they're not totally benevolent. So there's things attached to it. It also changes your financial structure, uh, you know, uh, um, and and also as Paul Paul did mention, Ontario creates and. You know, NOHFC, the Northern Heritage Fund, is a different animal. It's a business model. Um, they'll fund, they'll fund it based on your business. So if you meet their criteria, there, there's a chance that they can, that they'll participate. They don't necessarily need Telefilm or or anybody else. Ontario Creates has much more of a connection with Telefilm because mm -hmm. if you get Telefilm, you're going to get Ontario Creates. If you get Telefilm, Ontario Creates, you might get Harold Greenberg. It's like. Uh, uh, the other avenue that I've done twice is, uh, um, and it's been a part of a feature, has been Canada Council for the Arts, which, you know, it's it's a way of getting up to I don't know what it is, uh, sixty to hundred grand now to to make uh, a feature. So it is possible to do that. You really need to have your ducks in a row for these kind of applications these days. Um, uh, but I but I do think it is possible to do it without it as the one film Paul and I are making a film together and we don't plan to go uh, to telefilm with it. We, we're finding other ways of making it. And that does mean making it for less, but yeah. you can, if, if, if you, 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 you can make these films for a lot less than, than you used to. You don't have to shoot on film. Um, it, you know, that saves you tons of money right there. Um, but also there, there is a market it's, you know, well, to do it. The other thing too is that Telefilm has a finite amount of money. They can't finance everybody. So to get to the point where you've done all this work to prepare this film and get it out there and rely on them and they say no, well then it just crumbles to the ground. So you have to kind of have other, other ways of getting around it. Filmmaking is really uh, 
you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty fun thing to do. A lot of people want to do it and it's getting more and more competitive to get money from telefilm. So I think that's why, you know, it's great. They're there. I'd love to make movies with them, but if I can't, I got to try to find other ways to do it. And more, more and more filmmakers here in Canada are doing that. The other thing too, is that their funding deadlines come up once a year. So if you, you have to fit within the schedule kind of of when they want to make, of when their financing is available. And that doesn't always always match up with other funding that you have. So, um, you know, they, they kind of, they, they, they do get involved and um, it's on their sketch, you know? So yeah, uh, that's, and it can be delayed by a year. You might call, yeah. It could be delayed by a year. They could say, we like it, apply again next year. And so yeah. it can really, really be a long time where there's also other things. You can do a lot more cheating without telephone. You can't cheat when you have government money. Um, you can't, work without permits or you know do this and that and, and do things on your own you can do it and you do it but you really you, you can do a lot of much more creative things without them because you don't have to be you're not accountable to it so that's that that is a way i mean good good question yeah, yeah. okay you have another question we do um one moment how important is a theatrical release realistically in the Canadian market? I'm going to let you answer that, Paul. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing about theatrical releases is that they, they, uh, they trigger the process. And the part of that process is reviews, you know, and the reviews come out and not a lot of reviewers from major uh, news outlets will review something that goes, you know, directly to iTunes or, or on demand. So in building the, uh, the reputation of the filmmaking team, you know, it is nice to have uh, those, th those legitimate reviews and uh, a theatrical release. Um, and there's nothing, you know, Terry will probably agree with me, there's nothing cooler than seeing your movie up on a big screen of that size with an audience that's there engaging their reactions, looking at the audience, seeing whether or not uh, they laugh when they're supposed to, or they start shuffling their chair and they get bored, you know, uh, some people get up and leave. I mean, all these things are important for, for newer filmmakers to see what the experience is like from the audience. When something plays at home on Crave, you don't really get to see that and you don't really get a clear idea of how many people ended up watching it and, and, and taking it in either. So, um, so for those reasons, I think it's important. Now for the success of a film, uh, throughout my career, I've worked in distribution and I've, I've seen a lot of films not perform that well theatrically, but they do fantastic on home video. And then when they come out with a part two or something like that, they're, they explode in theaters. So, so I would say that success isn't necessarily uh, um, tied to a theatrical release uh, as much as it was at one time. Right now, you can just kill it on Netflix or on, on Crave or something else like that. And, uh, and your film could end up doing really well. So um, for, for, for many reasons, I think uh, it, it's, it's great, but it's definitely not necessary. What, what, if, what would fall, uh, one of the experiences I had was that um, Mongrel actually didn't believe in the film that much. So they, they did their Toronto obligated, they obligated to play it, played two weeks at Bell Tiff Lightbox. Um, they had some bookings they were making, but I personally booked it at, uh, um, at the Princess Cinema because I, I, you know, I, I know John Tutt and I just, I did it myself. I personally booked it at the uh, film circuit group in, um, in the Hamilton, in Ancaster, which is one of the biggest film circuit groups in Canada. Um, so one of the things that I noticed we're doing when we did the re US release, it was basically a DVD release. They, they were obligated to do uh, one week of theatrical. So what they did it, is they released it in Los Angeles. Um, uh, we, uh, we had an argument about that. We thought our film belonged in New York. Um, and they said, and they obviously had a contact. They four walled it, which is a term, right? Where they, they basically rented the theater to, uh, uh, to, to play it. So that's something that's you get more and more, especially in the US, you four wall a film in New York for a few days. And basically you're, you're giving them a guarantee, you're paying them a guarantee uh, 
of, of your buying the theater. It's not as expensive as you think it might be. I don't mean, Paul, you have a different experience. I don't know if you four walled at all, but you, you're renting a theater because that's that will get you reviews. Um, I don't know if that's going to change. I mean, COVID's changing so many things. It's it's I I, I still I still personally feel that like I recently re-released my first film theater. <laughs> I did a 4K upgrade on it of uh, a restoration, and I played it in four theaters. I called up and I got it in that. So it's not impossible to do that. Winnipeg, the Cinematheque is a great place. That's that's the home of Guy Madden. You know, it's 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 the it's a place of it's a uh, you know a, a well respected place uh, in, in Winnipeg and in Canada to get your film. You can call them. You can get them to do that. You can do theatrical releases in Canada. There's only six or seven mm. uh, independent cinemas in Canada. But you know, you know business wise, though, I've I have talked to uh, some friends of mine during COVID that are distributors and said, how are things going out there with all the theaters closed? And some of the comments that I was getting back was that the films that they put out on DVD are doing five times or on, on VOD are doing five times what they regularly expected that that would have done under normal circumstances if it was set up by a theatrical release. So, I mean, things are changing, especially, I wouldn't use this year as a marker for anything no. going forward, but the, the point is um, they didn't have a theatrical release and they still perform very well. It helps that people are locked in their homes right now, but still, uh, um, you know, there's a robust uh, non-theatrical market out there and I, I wouldn't be afraid to go straight to it. You know, but it's if, also, but it's also, you know, the downside of that would be it's incredibly competitive. So you're dealing with now what, uh, what's coming out on VOD, you know, like mm -hmm. you won't get on the Disney channel um, so you're not going to be up against Mulan or whatever. Um, so there, there, you're still, if you're, if you're talking, we're in, the, I'm in the same boat. I'm an independent filmmaker and uh, I'm not going to be able to market against that, but I can, I can control one market at a time. And you do that with, you do that with your theatrical in, in, mm -hmm. um, you know, because the, your theatrical in, uh, for the, for the woman who loves giraffes. It's Robin, you know, Robin at, at Kinosmith is a very small distributor and you were able to book it and keep it going in theaters for a long time. Um, you can do that yourself. You can, you can book it. You can say, okay, I'm going to target Winnipeg. You don't even have to go there because we can do this. I did. That's what I did. We just zoomed the meeting. Um, and you can, that helps a lot. Things like that. Like you, you just don't give them yeah. these days. You go, I'll come, I'm available. One of the actors is available. I've got, you know, for fall, I set up a, 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 a conversation about the film, which dealt with sexual abuse. I set up, a, you know, a panel and we, and we filmed it at, and we put it out uh, on CBC, put, put it out then as a, uh, Michael Enright put it out on, on his Sunday morning. And that's, I got screenings from that, from through a uh, uh, um, film group. They read it, they heard it, they wanted to book the film. So those kind of things really help. And so these days you can do a podcast. You could do, you know, if you've got some hook, something that works, like Paul said in the niche. So I really think independent theatrical, it's still worth doing because it's because I'm I'm an I'm eternal, you know, I'm eternally hopeful about theatrical. I I yeah. nothing like seeing it on the big screen. Nothing, nothing like nothing it, like but it. It. Not necessary. All right, all right, Christina, you got any more? Yeah, I have um, a couple more actually. Okay. So there's the first question that it was reworded, but I'm gonna give you both. Um, with pre-COVID festivals, we would try and network, bring people to the film and try to get the attention of people in the industry with the hopes of getting distribution. But mm -hmm. now with festivals going online, how can we still do that? And then the follow-up and the rewording was, how can we as filmmakers still get the most benefit from festivals during COVID? I, you know, I, I Paul, I kind of think, I, I, I almost am going to go to sleep until this is over. Like the, that part of, you know, for film release. I, I haven't, I'm an avid film watcher. I watch a film at least every day. I can see behind me. That's, you know, I watch a film every day. 
I haven't, I've watched barely a film on any film festival because there's, I don't really know how it's going for film festivals. I'm not really sure. And I'm wondering if, if you can wait, if you should wait, that's my opinion until we are, until festivals are back up and with public because that works. I'm not sure why, you know, a film festival versus the Criterion Channel. You know, I'm not sure. Paul, yeah. what's your opinion? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, my, in my, in my experience, it's not going well. You know, at film festivals right now, I, I really feel for them. Um, it's, uh, it's not the same experience. People have to be there physically. Uh, I, I think business can still be done. You know, we can still sell films, you know, but, uh, you know, amongst each other that we know are, but this is going to happen anyway, regardless of, of, of a film festival. If Steven Soderbergh goes out and makes a movie, uh, the, the industry uh, is, is built to send something like that around. If you're not a well-known filmmaker, then um, it's going to be difficult to be that surprise hit that is generated by audiences physically and, 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 and press physically being in place. Um, so uh, the attendance is, is not the same. People that are watching films, it's, it's okay. But I really, my heart goes out to people who have done all this work, waited all this time. Finally, the 20, late 2020, early 2021 um, film festivals have come along. They need to get their films out there. And, uh, and it's, it's not like, like Whistler, I think is on right now. I know some, some good friends that have their, their films out there. Um, and uh, it's not, it's not the same. So I, if, if possible, I would wait. I think that we are turning a corner. I think that people will be at Cannes this year, if you, that happens in May. And then I think the Toronto Film Festival in September, hopefully will be somewhat back to normal. They might still have limited size crowds or they might find different ways to do things. But as soon as travel is open again and people are able to do that, it'll, it'll happen. But uh, without that, how do you try to get that experience? I don't really have a good answer for you. I, I, it's such a strange thing. Um, uh, if I had a movie that, that was out there, um, I'd, be, I'd be scrambling. And I, and I wouldn't expect the same results as I, as I would if, if something was happening. I think I just lower my expectations and uh, feel like I got the raw end of a, of a deal, like just bad timing. So uh, if you have the power within you to wait, then I would wait. Um, if not, then, um, you know, all, all, all the best. That's all I can say right now. I, might, my, my, I can make, you know, I can make some calls. My answer could change. Uh, but the messages I'm getting from my buddies and from my focus on, on what's happening at festivals right now is really low. I, I just not paying attention. I'm waiting. Yep. Yeah, now, I mean, not, not what you want here. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, we'll take a moment of silence right now. To it's a panda yeah, moment of silence for moment people. Moment of silence towards the yeah. death of the film festival. <laughs> but, you know. I, I think the AGH was an example of the, you know, everybody's calling here from Hamilton, uh, uh, watching them from Hamilton. Um, they did okay, um, but they didn't do that well. And and I'm like, I bought tickets for support, but I watched one of the films or two of the films, I think. And it wasn't because I didn't want to, it's just that, you, you know, you get in your house and you've got all kinds of distractions and things that happened. And it's it's also not the same experience. I'll watch it when it's released on one of the streaming networks that I have, uh, which will Oh, on the business out. side. I mean, when you're out there and when you're doing this, when you're having meetings, you're bumping to people in the hallway, uh, you know, when you someone, something catches a buzz and it's going around for the next couple of days, have you seen this? Have you seen this? I mean, it's a physical experience, you know, it's because you're there. Uh, it's, yeah. it's kind of neat. Like it's really special. And that's, I mean, that's part of the fun of being a filmmaker and finally getting your chance to have a, a film at a festival like that. It's really, there's, there's nothing like it. It's kind of fun. Yeah. So to take that away and think that you can do that remotely. Um, it's almost like the dynamic feeling that people would get if Terry and I were actually standing in front of them right now. I mean, <laughs> it's not quite the same with us being on video. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So okay. do you, you want to, are you going to do your, uh, your uh, your document thing? Or are we doing? That, I gotta drink some more vodka. Hang on. <laughs> okay. We have one more question. If we wanted to tackle okay. all of those before moving on, oh it might yeah. be a well, short I don't one. want to move on. I just want to answer questions. <laughs> this is easier. This is the last one for now. 
Okay. Um, is the distribution process much different for a short film compared to a feature film? Yeah. Uh, well, it's not much different because you know you the, the the pathway and the access is a little bit different. But really, um, maybe this is a good segue into what you know want to kind of talk about next is is um uh there's you know nobody goes to the movies to watch short films you know they might the, the Oscars put out a group of what their nominees were for short films from around the world once a year but that's it the short films used to pop up in front of feature films back in the day but they don't really anymore so uh, as far as public having access to short films it's not quite the same you know they fall as interstitials between feature films sometimes on CBC and maybe Crave but but that's it um so uh, festivals are really, really important that way. And then just making sure that you're part of the circuit of, of what's happening. CBC is really supportive, the NFB as well too. And, um, you know, so really just the straight up standard way of um, getting your film submitted to these festivals and to these places is, is pretty much, much what, you, what you can do that way. A, a, a feature film, length film, can be marketed in a traditional way, uh, and it can go through those traditional formats of theatrical release. You know, airlines buy short films as well too. Uh, you know, so you know, and then uh, and then on to home video and uh, and and then through a streaming s system as well too. Have you, for, for Paul, have you heard? Of, Paul, have you heard of these um, companies? Because I, I just have <laughs> other friends who've called me about their short film and say, "Hey, I made a short film and I got this call from a company." And there's there's a number of companies out there who uh, who collect short films, right? Mm -hmm. And say we'll give you whatever, and then they I'm not sure what they do with those short films, um, but they're but are, are is that I mean some of them is that a shady thing to do? Are there some of these companies not? Have you heard of these companies? You know that, that you get a call yeah. from, and uh, like are they legit? Is it worth taking? Is it worth looking at it? If because they're not going to give you any money, you know. Are they looking to well, just fatten up their catalog to sell it, or what? Yeah, in what? some cases you will end up selling your your short films, but it's not going to recoup the amount of money and work that you put into it. And this, and a lot of features are in the similar boat as well too. But um, but it, it is nice to end up getting out there and getting onto a circuit. Like well, there's 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 lots of great short film festivals that are out yeah. there. Right? You know, Clermont Ferrand and in 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 France. And, and, and others as well too exist specifically for the purpose of highlighting shorts. And there's also like Oscar level shorts and docs, you know, that are short as well too. So, um, but as far as, you know, the, uh, as far as the retail pathway that we're used to with feature films, it's, it, there's just a much more robust system that's built for features than there are for shorts. So, um, so I would go the route of festivals and then, you know, uh, that are specific to, to shorts and that's a quick Google search. If not, um, maybe you can uh, ask Christina for me just to try to find a list that we can post um, and we can follow up with some information after this if we have some questions as well too, just to build some sort of a glossary of information that we can provide for people to access later on, uh, you know, but these are easily Google, you know, uh, to, to find these things as, as, uh, as legitimate places and organizations out there to do it, but, um, but yeah, I hope that answered a question. Yeah, I just got an update from uh, the Hamilton Film, uh, Hamilton AGH Film Festival. Um, he, uh, he said, hey, our sales were down, but our viewership was about the same as last year when we had 30 or more films. So okay. I stand corrected. The AGH Film Festival actually, um, like, you know, their sales were down because probably cost yeah. less, right? So the viewership, yeah. uh, so it's a market, uh, you know, in, in a lot of ways, that's a market shift. I'm wondering, is there a market um, for online short films that, that that other people know of? I mean, that's not something that I'm familiar with because I spend most of my time, you know, all my time really just working on features. So it, it, I'm wondering, is that a, is, do you think that, that that's a path? It's kind of like the, there's got to be short film streaming networks. I know movie, mm. uh, movie plays a lot of shorts. Um, uh, that, you know, CBC Gem plays a lot of shorts. You know, there's shorts on there too. But 
I'm like personally, I'm not a short special. Like I don't know, I don't watch them, and I don't. Yeah, yeah. And and it depends the kind of shorts that this person's talking about. That the question: uh, Are we talking about experimental narrative documentary? That's a whole other uh, thing. You know, we used to have. I don't know if you, you remember Paul. What's the? Are they still around? There was a Canadian distrib distribution company that was a nonprofit, run out of yeah. Toronto. What media? They were, they what were media? around forever. So, yeah. yeah, and they still are. It's part. It's part of Channel Zero. So check out uh, O U A T Media. Um, what it's pronounced, and they're a, they're a specialist at global worldwide distribution for short films, and I believe they're still they're still active and uh, and and they do really well. Yeah, they're they're pretty pr pretty pretty dominant. No. I, I think some of it's to what you go in to doing. If if I love a good short film, there's an awful lot of short films out there that are basically proof of concept films because they want to make a feature about it. That's a different mm -hmm. animal, and that can work that way. That's a teaser. That's that's a lot of things happens. That I, you often hear about uh, this person is making their feature based on their short that they did. Well, their short got them to make the feature, but nobody heard. I'm like I'd never heard of the short. He said, "Well, I played at film festivals." There's a million film festivals. So there's a short, there's short program in almost every film festival. Yeah. yeah. So so and that's a way of, but it's almost like that's one way of getting noticed so you can make features. But then there is brilliant short filmmaking. It's kind of yeah. like we don't uh uh so uh, that I think it's kind of like being a painter. There's going to be a limited, you know, you don't go into painting just because you want to make a lot of money. You know, as a matter of fact, you don't go into independent filmmaking to make a lot of money either. But, you know, it's kind of like you're making it because that's your art. That's what you do. That's who you are. And they're brilliant shorts, um, you know, and, and, and a great short, you know, experimental, any genre, any can, 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 is great unto itself. It's just, it doesn't necessarily have, it doesn't have the same market as a commercial uh, um, documentary narrative feature um, market. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, we're all out of questions, but we have a comment that says that um, yes, people want to see a list of film festivals to submit shorts to if you have any up your sleeve. Um, that could be a, a later question. Yeah, is that well? Can you, yeah, I don't know if you have a place that's on your um, on, on your website that you can post after Christina or, or definitely. Uh, yeah, I can, so um... we'll find that as a resource and and send it to you and and then there's also like just maybe just a general thing for festivals of where um, you know where people can start. You know, there's also film festival submission services. One of them went down recently, and this is after I submitted, so I might not, I might not know for sure. But Film Freeway was one where you simply would go there, enter all the information about your film. You put in your movie poster, your synopsis, your director's name, stars, all that kind of stuff. You do that once, and then you end up getting emails every week that says deadlines for this film festival are coming up. It's sixty dollars to enter would you like to enter your film and you can press yes and that's it and then every once in a while you get an email from someone that says i saw that your film you know trailer on film festival we'd like to invite you to to apply and uh and then it doesn't cost you anything which is kind of nice yeah. and then you just apply and and that's it there's constantly a list of upcoming ones uh you know and and that was a great service it must have been very yeah. chaotic because every film maker around the world was uh, was was subscribing to it, no, but it was film, film freeway. I just used it. I'm just that's how my that's how my short is playing at a festival right now. In, Did you? In, I got stuff on my. So it's 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 active, right? Yeah, it's active. It's the other one that went down. I think there was two. Oh. There was two, and I know film freeway seems to be also. That's the best resource. It's like film <laughs> freeway. Film freeway. Uh, you go on it, and um, I mean, and you look. I'm sure people have done this and who are who are listening. Uh, the you are um uh you can you can look at the film festivals and you can see you can find all the film festivals in the world that are playing and what they're what they're accepting and and then you can apply to them unfortunately they always cost money um the one of the resources that does work with telefilm is you don't have to get telefilm funding to submit a film to a film festival through telefilm 
and where they where where you won't have to pay a fee. Now, a, a telefilm, I don't know how it's going to work this year, but you know, telefilm for the major film festivals, Venice, Berlin, Toronto, uh, not Toronto because they're here, uh, Venice, Berlin, Sundance, uh, South by Southwest, I think maybe um, the, the big, the big boys can, um, somebody comes to Montreal and watches films. And, and if you submit it through telefilm, and like I said, you don't have to have funding from telefilm to use this. You go onto the website, you look for that, go to their film festival section, and you get yourself on the list, start getting your emails, and start submitting through that. Personally, it's a real crapshoot because you got a guy or girl, somebody coming from France, two people, they're sitting there, they're watching Canadian features, they already know they're going to take Adam Agoyan, da 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 da, da. Um, and they're looking, they will watch, I guarantee you, they might watch 20 minutes and if they don't like it, it's, it ends because they've got a lot of films to watch. Shorts might have a better chance because it's a short film. So you might as well watch that. it all. Pardon? You might as well watch it all. Yeah, you might as well watch it all. It's three bad out. Rather than just walk out after yeah. being bored, right? Like, yeah. you know, like, hey. Yeah, so features, with a feature. I can't say we've been successful. I've been successful. Mm -hmm. I've always been successful uh, with a personal contact getting into the major film festivals. Mm -hmm. um, but it doesn't hurt. It doesn't cost you anything. That's a resource that's, mm -hmm. that you can grab, um, you know, for free. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, do we want to move into the little presentation that Paul has? No. <laughs> I decided against it. We've talked about, we, we, so we talked about most of this stuff anyway. What okay. I had here, just in case people are interested, was just what was the pathway for the last documentary that I ended up doing and what were some of the important elements and things that I had in mind to think about prior to getting the movie out into the marketplace. And I think really from that, I wouldn't want to scroll through or kind of post it up there right now because it is just a big, long, confusing document. But it's just something to let you know that, you know, we applied for funding um, through Ontario Creates, uh, which is a great resource. Um, you know, here, I don't know if Ontario Creates is available to people outside of the province, but for everybody yeah. here, go check it out. And um, uh, they had um, up to $25,000 in marketing funding available. And uh, you kind of had to just go there and give them your pitch. Talk about what you're going to do and how you feel as though you're going to use this money. What are, what are the assets that you have available uh, to, to get out there and uh, execute? And, um, and then, you know, reporting back to them. So uh, it's great, once again, too, because it gives you a list of all the things that you should really know. It's, I, I think that making a, making a movie and getting it out there is probably really no different than um, opening a restaurant, you know? Like, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a million dollar enterprise, you know, at, 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 the, at, at, a, at a small level for, for most independents. You think about that. Well, maybe opening a restaurant is the same kind of thing. You need people, you need to get it. And, and once you're done and once you're proud of it, and once you think you have something presentable, you kind of got to tell people about it. And then once they come in, you have that really short period of time right at the beginning, you know, to get it right or else people aren't going to come back or else word is going to spread this shitty or that your staff is making a big mess of things. You know, like really it's, it's, you're, you, you make and break that first little while and uh, you know the public has a lot of other options to go to so I think thinking about it that way is, is, is really important so being prepared ahead of time knowing your strengths and um, you know having something uh, that you think that people are going to be interested in uh, are really important and also thinking in mind who would be interested in this what are the targets that we can go after uh, Explain, you know, what do you mean by targets? Like, what, like, are you talking about uh, who is your age? Like, you have to fill out all these things, right? You have to tell them eight, it's people, um, people between 18 and 25, uh, you know, the various markets. Like, these are all these serious questions that you get asked, and they can actually be difficult to answer because they're, they're kind of simple to answer, but the question sometimes is overwhelming to, uh, to somebody who's never done this before. Um, you know, it's like, you know, like I said earlier, you got to have a log line, you know, um, 
you know i think any movie you should be able like this is like anything else as well too even like even if it is like a restaurant or any other business it's like you should be able to describe your business in one sentence you should be able to describe it better in a paragraph and you should be able to write a full page describing it as well too in more detail and as you're going through the process of making your movie it's going to take you a really long time and those things and those notions should be very clear to you uh as you're in the middle of your process and then once you're finished as well too in case you do bump into somebody and they have one minute to talk to you about it in a lobby then if they have a little bit more time to talk to you about it as you're both standing there waiting for public transportation and then if you sit decide to sit down and have a coffee you should have a little bit more time to sit down and talk about it you shouldn't stumble over top of what you're trying to talk about with your movie you should be really able to let people know about it if you can't do that face to face with one person i find it highly difficult for you to be able to do that on a mass level so all of those things should be inherent to you if you if it's not your job you know some directors and writers and things like that of great movies really don't know how to describe these things in a, in a clear and concise way to when they when they end up bumping into someone and meeting them but um you should make sure that your the people that are behind your marketing should be able to do that or your distribution so um it really helps if everyone is all on board with that and and think about it back in the days when you used to go to blockbuster walking past a movie poster and it's the same thing that you end up doing on netflix all the time still has great strength in delivering your message that comes down to the font and it comes down to just your first impression that way the second one is generally your trailer you know have a short representation that's two minutes or under anything longer than that is is, is going to be too long you know and then even so there's smaller clips that we end up seeing that i that catch my eye that i find are really interesting on instagram and and uh and and on twitter and and Facebook. So those are the ways that you know short attention span people are getting in touch for the first time and and uh the second and third time with your with your film as well too. You don't need these traditional stacked up uh ways of of at massive advertising of getting your message out there. Things can travel a lot quicker, but but you know absolutely make sure that you're putting thought into each one of those steps and then on top of that too like with the documentary that we did the woman who loves giraffes was a story about um a, a, a woman who who knows you know who's who studied giraffes her, her her entire life and uh her career was taken from her and um you know suddenly she ended up being uh uh uh, she had her, a career resurgence, and uh, this this movie follows the entire pathway of that. And the 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 line, the poster, the 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 trailer, all had to tell that same story in in the same way. And so, um, and so, I, I think it's important for all people to make sure that they put a lot of thought into that. You know, ultimately, who who are the people that are going to be the reliable people that you can go to on that subject? And uh, um, I, I'm just, uh, I just don't think that there's ever, that's ever stressed the importance enough of, of how people should, uh, should prepare themselves for that. Sorry to babble about that, but it gets, oh. it's. So, and, and some of the things that you're going to end up, uh, like I said before, earlier in this, it's really important that you get a perspective on this. These are not things that you should be precious about. If it's about your film, I can be very precious about my own films. And my synopsis, which are supposed to be a page long, uh, I suffer through them. They're three, four pages long, and I'm trying to kill, I have to kill babies all along the way and condense it and find new language to, to take uh, a 20 minute bit of action that I think is important and condense it down to three words because it's not important. It's like, what's imp I, I have to think of this outside of um, me as an artist. It's not art. Getting a dis distribution is not art. It's advertising. It's advertising. It's yeah. sales. It's like what color is good? What picture on the on on the uh, poster? Um, well, you know, like so Paul said, you know, I, I joked about this. I have a friend who's worked in um, <clears throat> broadcasting for years and years. I started off with him, and we used to joke about he 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 was always he always made posters for things he wanted to make, and he always had the poster, and he was he was convinced you could sell you could get a film financed by just making a really good poster you can yeah <laughs> that's it's the, the the truth is is these long synopsis these long intellectual things that you might have to write to get a canada council grant 
are not the things you write for the raw capitalist market of films. It, it got nothing to do with intellectual thought. Go ahead and do that at a film festival and you know, wear a beret and smoke cigarettes, but it's like, this is hardcore sales. And, and even on a short film, I think you will do better if you apply that always to that. And, you know, if there's humor in your product, you know, use it. It's like, especially doing a trailer. It's, it's if there is a moment of relief, think of your trailers carefully. Cause you're, if, if you're talking to us, you might be making your own trailer. It's really important. I've done trailers, Paul and I worked together doing trailers. Um, I love trailers. trailers. And it's fun because it's a different animal. You you do not think about uh, uh, the preciousness of your big film. You try and find out what are we pushing here. So we did the, we did a trailer for the woman who loves giraffes, um, and we thought about it in a totally different way than other people involved in the film were thinking about it. They thought it needed to sell giraffes in some way, and we were going, no, it's selling a woman who got fucked over by, <laughs> by the true. system and we and that's the story we told and we didn't give it all away we, you know we we kept it you want to find out how she you can realize she got screwed over how did she get screwed over here's a hint here's one of the bad guys he's in there and you know and, and you kind of shape it it's really important that's all commercial work that's got nothing to do with the art of what you've made in your film but it will help get people in the door and and you know and that and because we're even talking about selling it to a distributor a trailer could probably sell your film it'll get them to watch it you gotta have a good trailer <laughs> uh, you know and, okay. and any yeah. more questions <laughs> no more questions yet maybe we can put out this like final call yeah, um yeah. We'll see if any if any come through. Yeah. Um, no, no. It, I mean, we can keep I'll keep lightly battling. Um, well, no, yeah, but we we covered a lot of ground. Like you oh, know, we, like we have a question. Good. Oh, we <laughs> have a question, Paul. Okay. What proposal materials are key to have when you talk with the big companies like Netflix, Crave, um, movie poster, trailer? What else would you show? Costume design, set designs. What about? financial information is this for making a film do you think he's the person's asking or is this for after the film's done hmm. it sounds like it's for making a film because they go into the screenplay concept interactive presentation well, first first thing's going to be the only question i'm going to have is getting in the door mm -hmm. it's a really hard door to get into would you not say paul well you know the people i crave are there to receive pitches you know to make movies and uh, you know they're not the only ones that are going to make this, but are, are, that are they're going to be part of that funding system. Or same with Netflix, it's usually a, a, a group of people. So it always helps. All of these people are risk averse. You know, they so when they see something that they like, they know it. But the other, the second question is usually who else is interested, or you know, have you shown this to anybody else? And it's it's always nice to have, I think, a group of uh, support. So. Yeah, this is a big question as far as making a film. What are the elements that you need? Well, um, like I said, that synopsis and just the, basically a one page description is something that you can start off with. Now, in the, um, the amount of, of, of information that people get, good thing, you know, good, good question uh, right now because, uh, you know, Terry and I are active in this. We're putting together a, a, a teaser, like a sales teaser uh, that we can send around to financers and to broadcasters, streamers, um, because we already have uh, the film mostly shot. So uh, even though the footage is rough and it's not color corrected and it's not, you know, it doesn't have proper sound mix, we can still give a good, fairly good representation of what we have. And we've decided that we're going to make it three minutes long. Um, now, once people see something, they say, okay, this is great. If you have something available, if this film isn't shot, that's obviously totally understandable. A realistic budget and what they call a top sheet to the budget, not the entire budget, but just the main categories of it, um, you know, through a standard budgeting pro movie budgeting program. Oh, downloadable <laughs> on Telefilm. Yeah, Telefilm has that as a document in their resources section. So uh, 
they'll want to see what that sort of top level is. Where is your money? And is this kind of a realistic uh, distribution of, of, of money throughout all the different costs? Simple, basic information. Yeah. A, a financing structure of where you think the money is going to come from in order for you to make this. You know, partially part of the money is coming from the network. Part of it is coming from tax credits in, in Canada, from federal and Ontario tax credits. Some of it might be private financing. Some of it might be deferring some of your own uh, your payments uh, to your to to the filmmaking group. Um, you know, how how do you think that this million dollar film that's in your budget is going to be financed? Um, and uh, if there are visual representations on top of that that come from your production design team, that would be fantastic too. Too much information though beyond that uh, as an introduction to someone in a, in a, in a situation like that is, is, um, is too much. There's, so there's... The, other, the last thing sorry, the last thing I want to say about that as well too is you know people in general aren't, aren't allowed to just blindly send off their, um, their, their their pitches uh, to networks. There's liabilities behind that. So you generally have to fill out some sort of a form that is asks permission to send something to them. Uh, you know, and I think that the reason for this for the most part is that if they have an active project internally, maybe at that time, uh, that is along the same lines of the same subject matter, um, then there's going to be a dispute as to whose idea came first or did they steal the idea from you. So they might want to review your, 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 uh, your um, submission just simply on one page to let you know whether or not it's okay for you to submit. After you do, they might have an, an actual list of what their requirements are um, you know, behind that. They always want to know about the team as well too and, and, and your, your history behind it too. So. Um, you know, there's, there's a, you know, if, if you, if you want, you can go and look at, I know the CBC and their producer resources section for pitching them will have a list of, uh, of, of things that most um, broadcasters or streamers would want to see from somebody. So maybe that's another note to make as well too, Christina, we can just give a link to the producers section of, uh, of the CBC's website for submitting, submitting to them. I can I can share a, uh, you know I can share a document too later on just um, I mean on old um, what what we call a directors especially are always going to have to they're going to be asked for directors notes directors mm -hmm. notes are basically going to consist of of your 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 overall your your quick synopsis your personal connection if you're the writer um, and how you see the film it's going to include exam you want to give examples of other films you want to do tone. You want to do all that, you, you know, they're going to, those are the things they want to know. I guarantee you, your mind will change by the time you make the film, but they still want to see that you put thought into it mm -hmm. and you put these things up. They're, they're basically, you make them, you know, you make them in, uh, you know, an Adobe product or pages or something like that. Um, lots of color. I'm sorry, but these days, these cannot be boring documents. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I've even made for uh, one of my films recently. Last year we were at a, a festival, our, our marketing festival. It's like we did, we don't have the film, but we made a mood reel. So it was basically, what's the mood of the film? And you use, I used some original footage and a lot of clips from other films. And then I put a soundtrack underneath it. And I had never made one before, but it's something they want to know what's, what am I going to feel like when I'm in that movie? And you can use clips from other films and you just, you know, that's one method um, of showing what your film's uh, going to be like. Because, of course, they are asking you if this person's, uh, you know, you're talking about going to Crave or, and you're going to make these kind of things if you want to pitch your film. You're, you're being put up against a wall of saying, show me what the film looks like before you make the film. And I know you don't have any money, you know. So it's really a difficult. So what Paul said earlier is less is more. Um, uh, I, I, you know, don't give them everything. Um, you can do a one page synopsis, which has your log line or two pages, a log line, your synopsis, a bit of tone, what your film's going to look like and pictures, lots of pictures, you know, uh, of showing it, uh, people like pictures. It's a very different industry than it was even 20, 30 years ago, um, where there was a lot more literacy. Uh, people could read a screenplay closely. Um, I wouldn't hand over your screenplay until it's asked for. I would, I mean, actually I would. If they just asked to read the screenplay, great. 
get them to read the screenplay. Um, I would not give them long synopsises. I would make sure it's no more than a page, 1.5 space, you know, that kind of thing. Like that, those are the marketing tools that you're going to be asked for anyways. You're going to use them in your marketing. You're going to use them all along the line. Uh, but, to, but to get money, this is, uh, 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 you know, get a distributor interested. You want to give them the, the, the guts of it, you know, of what, what you're doing. Paul and I are shooting a teaser for a feature that we that we're going to use for another feature and we're going to shoot that and we're because we're making the money we're making the film for so little money we're um uh, we're, we're planning this is going to what we're shooting is going to be part of the film it's just a segment that we know we can shoot and we're going to use that's a way of doing it and with that it's going to be less is more because we're not going to put the actors in it because we don't know 100 percent who all the actors are so you don't want to sell some a face that you that you don't have. So you find creative ways of, of um, you know, that's that's a, a way of doing that. That's, that might be a good place to leave it. Um, okay. That's a pretty good, a pretty interesting concept is shooting a, a piece without, um, like just as a window into your, the rest it's of your really film. Yeah. You're right. Like it's, it's really whatever you can do to get you. Like it's, it's so competitive. There's so many people um, it, that 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 want the attention of uh, of funders, you know, and of people that are going to get. These are business partners. These are people that have to believe in you creatively and financially. You know, there's got to be a certain level of trust and responsibility there. If you're new, it's incredibly hard. So sometimes you have to reach out to other people that already have experience or relationships with with. Um, with these people and, and ask them to be part of the team then you have to convince those people to be part of your team well you know once again overwhelming someone who's you know has a lot of work to do it's great just to try to have these key kind of smaller things to get your point across as quickly as you can entice them to ask for more information so you know when not that terry and i are at a, lar at a higher level or a very high level but we're thinking what are the interesting ways that that we can get people uh into this uh that, that are within our financial means. And one of those things is Terry's a filmmaker. He's got cameras and we have, a, you know, a, we, we thought creatively or we're trying to as much as possible. We're going to go out and shoot it. And I don't even know how it's going to turn out. We're hoping that it turns out good. But if, it, if we don't feel like it stands up to, to truly represent what we're trying to do, then we'll scrap that idea and try something different. So be creative open your minds. If you're a filmmaker, then you have the ability to just get out there and try to do something, keep it simple. And, uh, and, and hopefully it'll, it'll, it'll be within, um, it'll be within your reach to, to get these people interested. Um, I, I can, I'll hand over, um, uh, like a, like a, a lookbook that I created last year for one of my films. It, mm -hmm. it's a, it's, it's, it works really well. I had to go out and do some photography and I stole the rest off the internet I mean and it yeah. you know gives and, and I'll, I'll, I'll give that uh I don't know if Paul has a, a marketing if you got any marketing plans or anything like that that you can share you know people can take a look at it you know we can maybe you can rub out the real dollar figure or something like that and, you know um, put it up well yeah one of the one of the things that I can send along as well too is is you know just that blank application even you know I sent this off to a friend that said you know what does Ontario creates look for in a marketing plan and I said there's one on their website like there's an as part of their application I mean they'll tell you what you would be what you would put together and what you should think about when you're building a marketing plan you know and and I, I so I'll, I'll I'll send that to Christina as well too as a link to say like hey here's a resource for what your mind should be thinking about um, once your film is made and trying to get it out there. It's always better to have that in mind while you're making the movie to so don't let it distract you, but it's something to keep in mind uh, as you're making it because even s simple things like unit photography, taking pictures of stuff while you're actually making the film is pretty valuable to have later on because you can't go back. So, that's that's a uh, yeah I, I mean uh, so many times i've pulled frames from films and it doesn't work as well you can do that it's not quite the same though yeah, like yeah. It's, it's it's always kind of neat to have those behind the scenes and, and proper you know gallery shoots if you don't have that that's fine just yeah anyway, anyway yeah I'm, I'm gonna send this to you right now 
Thank Christina. you. And I'll, um, I'll forward, if anybody has any more questions for Terrence and Paul, I'll um, send them to yeah. me. You know where to find me. You can either Facebook Factory Media Center or email me there. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Can yeah, I ask you do. one quick question before we leave? Sure. Is a lookbook similar to a TV Bible? No, it's not. A TV Bible is much, much more detailed. It's your Bible. A Bible is a Bible. It's how you live your life. So it's how the show is going to live. That's something that you usually get in, in Canada. You can do it ahead all you want. Um, it's usually something that's asked for and can actually be funded. Uh, at some point, if there's enough, if you go to a meeting and you're pitching, Bibles are, aren't, and usually you don't do, you don't, you do Bibles for TV. You don't do them for, um, uh, for feature films. You do a lookbook for a feature film, a Bible, is it gives the world of your television series and it's like in the bible everybody who becomes involved every director who comes that week to shoot that episode every writer who who's going to write an episode if you're doing that kind of thing they have to read the bible and they have to know oh we don't do this we do this it's got technical stuff in it um i, I shot a tv series called anti-droids a number of years ago kids series it's all cgi except for three kids running around the cgi is all over the place and not well planned and it's like the rules were don't move the camera you know things like that if you're shooting it remember it's a digital character there okay so you have to find like but then the bible is also about characters who they are what they do what they don't do that that's really a different thing um, and it's something that takes a lot of work and if you got a tv series sold to a network or or uh, for development they will probably give you development money and they will say with that development money, we want the first three scripts uh, and we want the Bible. And, you know, uh, but with a feature film, a lookbook is, is different than the director's notes, but it can be the same. Like in my case, I created the lookbook because I could. And it just somebody in our group who I'm working with had to do it and I did it. So that's a different, it's, it's, five, six pages uh, and has lots of pictures. And I don't know if this is what you're asking as well too, Christina, but it's it's generally a part two thing. Like, you know, really people want to know right off the bat, you know, um, first of all, the script, they'll, if they, you know, they'll read the synopsis like anyone else who was really quick, you can read it in a few minutes, um, you know, a, a one page thing. And then, uh, you know, what is this going to cost? You know, and then where do you think you're going to get the money? And, uh, you know, that's generally what's going to catch people right off the bat. If there's any kind of visual that goes along with it, that's great. But those more kind of in-depth things that come from, you know, hopefully that, that, that second group of questions, you know, or, or coming out of a meeting as well, too. So uh, they are important. And I, I think they're important, very important amongst your team with building consensus. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, these things change and grow as time goes on and as well, too, as, as you're continuing to work on it. You know, talking about all of that is really important. So. Uh, so, yeah, I hope that we've inspired some people. We haven't confused anybody too much. You know, we've uh, I, th I think it's uh, the world was changed this year uh, by by what's going on with uh, with COVID hopefully for the best, you know, uh, people know more, more than ever that they really need entertainment and that they connect through films and television. And, uh, you know, I think that right now there's a, obviously a big glut in product. And as things open up, there's going to be a big rush of it, you know, so I don't know how that's going to affect the, the markets that are going on out there and how film festivals will be gorged with, with new material. Everything will sort itself out, but, um, you know, hopefully you, we got people a little bit more of an idea of the basics. And when, when we agreed to do this, I just thought, well, I'd like to just give people some basic information. Um, all of this stuff can be, you know, contested and argued with. There's a lot of opinions involved, but, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully we came mm -hmm. across and, and inspired some people. I, I think it's a really good idea to look on these websites, Telefilm, uh, which we spelled on, and then ODC <laughs> Ontario Creates, and go into their distribution things of, and look at their forms. And that's really going to help you. Uh, there, you, there's the questions on those forms, what they want to know, and and then and then figure out a way to, you know, 
to answer them from that. But Telefilm is a good resource for that. And it's not a resource that you need to have the film financed through. Even their festival marketing, they don't, they're not there just to promote films they finance. They are there to help you. So you can call and talk to somebody at Telefilm, the festival, uh, uh, the festival department and get a group four going and find out what's going on and they'll help you. They'll, they'll can point you with the resources and, and that. So, you know, those are the things that are important. They don't often tell you that, but Telefilm is not just for the finance film. And that's another way of getting your film made. Uh, a closing note for me would be, uh, I've been successful with getting uh, finishing money. Sometimes it's better to ask for finishing money than it is for beginning money. Mm -hmm. You've made it, you show it, they like it, they give you some money to finish it. That, yeah. that can work too. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, I hope it's helped too. So there we go. I think so. There's only so much reading you can do, but it's, it's really important to hear from people who have um, lived experience in yeah. this extremely difficult industry. Yeah. Um, so thank you very much for sitting down and talking with us tonight and for your generous offer of um, you know follow-up questions if they if they do come through um, sure yeah I, I really appreciate that just as a closing statement for me um, you know factory media center is is your local resource for um, helping get your film made in terms of um, equipment support um, after that we can do our best to you know connect you with people in the community like Terrence and Paul, um, but definitely keep keep making. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, good luck to everybody. Good luck. Yeah. Thank Bye you. for now. Thank you Bye. again. Bye. Bye. See you.